what's up guys welcome welcome back to the channel okay so i'm working on setting up this environment this small lab environment that i'm building one step at a time um, i just recently set up the main component which is installing true nas on the wtr pro if you do want to see that video link is in the description box below and now the next thing that i'm going to work on is setting up the firewall for this environment there are a lot of reasons why i want to do this so things like network segmentation enhanced security beyond my isp router better control over internet traffic, setting up VPN, and much more. Plus, I've been installing and testing a lot of applications in this environment, so I need to be on top of open ports and traffic flow, both in and out of my network. Having a dedicated firewall will also help me build on what I already know about firewall management and security. So I picked up this guy. This is the Zima Board 8. 32. Uh, this is going to act as the firewall for this lab environment I'm working on. I'm most likely going to install OpenSense on it, but for today, uh, we're just going to focus on the device and what it has to offer. Also, I've played around with PFSense and other firewalls before, but I have not touched OpenSense. So this is going to be fun and exciting. So if any of you guys watching this have an advice on things that I should think of before going through the installation, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below. I would really appreciate it. As always, it will help me and it will help anybody else that's gonna come across this video. Okay, let's get started talking about this guy. Okay, so let's start off with the look and feel of this thing. Size-wise, this thing is small and compact, which is one of the reasons why I got it in the first place. It's bigger than a Raspberry Pi, but it's minimalist enough that it wouldn't take up that much space at all. You could easily talk it away on a desk, mount it on a wall, or slide it into a network setup without it feeling kind of like bulky. The top of it is basically one big heat sink. And honestly, that just adds to the appeal a little bit because the way it's designed, it looks really nice. And it's not just for lux, it actually serves a purpose, helping to dissipate heat since this thing runs completely silent, but at the same time, the way it's designed, it just looks really good. I like it. It has just enough weight that you will notice, but it's not so much that it's a concern. It's relatively light. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Everything on it is metal, except for just a few parts like the bottom, which is plastic. But all in all, when you look at it, it, it feels really good. It feels and look really good. And it has like a premium look to it. Even though it's a small compact device, it just feels and look good in my opinion. So in terms of look, I love it. I like it a lot. And again, that's one of the reasons why I got it because it just looks good. It's just like a small device that looks really good. I like the design. The design is clean. And it's one of those gadgets, one of those, those devices that when someone gets to see it, they'll definitely ask you like, hey, what is that? Because it just looks good. And the heatsink thing, it's really doing it for me. It just, it kind of adds a little bit of appeal to it. So I love the way it looks. It looks really good. Now let's talk about the ports on this device because the connectivity here is what makes this board flexible for different type of setup. You have two gigabit ethernet ports. These are the ports that I'm going to be using for my firewall setup, one for WAN and then one for LAN. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that your network speed is always limited by your hardware capability. So if you have a 10 gigabit, gig ethernet connection you will need a hardware that can actually handle that and this well this device is definitely not it it's a gigabit only so don't expect ultra high speed network um, for me this is going to work perfectly because well that's exactly what i need you have two usb 3.0 ports and then you have one mini display port that support up to 4k i don't think i'll be using this display port that much since it's going to be a headless setup but it's nice to have in case i need a direct connection for video output and of course you have the 12 volt dc power input right there okay so moving to the back of the device we've got a few more ports on the back of the device so you have two SATA 3.0 ports here with a power connector according to the website and documentation this power connector is capable of powering two devices so if i need an additional storage i can hook up like a 2.5 inch ssd or a hard drive directly and i think that's one of the reason why this device is so great because you can use this device as kind of like a mini home lab if you need something affordable and cheap you can just buy this guy and be able to connect external storage to it you can even convert this thing uh to maybe like a storage uh, system like a nas or something like that so it has a lot of potential to it and this guy's back here this 
set of drives back here really does kind of add like that extra factor to it to be able to do much more with such a device that's so small. One SATA cable came in the box, so if I want to set up an SSD on external storage, I don't have to buy one. They do sell uh, these cables on their website, so if you do one um, to set up something like two um, external storage instead of just one, you will need to buy it, but it came with this one, so that's a plus, so I do not have to buy one. So. I appreciate that. Moving on to the side of the device, we have one more very important connector, and this is a PCIe 2.0 slot. This, let me add like an external or extra NIC if I want to upgrade uh, my network setup, so that's a huge plus. And having a full PCIe slot on the side of the device, on a device that is so small, it's such a huge plus because it just allows you to kind of extend this device to what you want it to be. And that go back, go, goes back to what I was saying earlier with the SATA cables on the back. Adding this on such a small device, just add a little bit of um, extra to it that allows you to just extend things and be able to get this device and set it up the way you want to set it up. For such a small device, this thing has a ton of ports. And I love it, to be honest. I, I, I sound like a broken record, but I really love that. It gives me exactly what I need for a firewall setup while still giving me room to, for expansion if I want to upgrade later on in the future. And I mean, if you are someone that, is, that love tinkering and love building things, uh, that is definitely a huge plus. So yeah, I, I love the, the amount of ports that is on this thing. All right, so let's talk about the specs so we know exactly what we're working with here and to understand what this thing is capable of. Okay, so at the heart of the device is an Intel Celeron quad-core processor running at 1.5 gigahertz with a boost speed of up to 2.3 gigahertz when needed. Now, let's let's be real here for a second. This isn't a high-performance CPU, but for what I needed for a firewall, or in your case, maybe you might want to run like a mini home lab server or run like a lightweight virtual machine, it's perfect, it's efficient, and well, it gets the job done. For graphics, it has the Intel HD Graphics 500. Now, I'm not planning to run desktop environment or play games on this guy, but if needed, it does support 4K output via display ports. It's good to have, it's a good to have, but I definitely don't think that I'll be using that at all. But if it's something that you need and you really need like a display, it definitely does have a display port right here, a mini display port right here that support up to 4K. So you're good on that end. This model of the Zimmer board, the Zimmer board A32 comes with eight gigs of um, DDR4 RAM. And here's something to keep in mind. Uh, the RAM is not upgradable. So whatever config you buy, you're stuck with it. But for me, for a firewall or maybe like a router or like with server, I feel like eight gig is more than enough. For storage on this version, you get 32 gigs uh, onboard storage, which is really good for what I'm planning to do with this device. But then again, if you need external storage, again, it goes back to one of the reasons why I said I love this device is this uh, external um, uh, set of ports on the back. You can add an extra, uh, extra storage as needed and kind of grow from there. But for internal storage, it came with um, 32 gigs of storage on board storage. And for me, that is more than enough for what I want to do, which is to set up a firewall on the sky. So overall, the device in itself is not a powerhouse, but let's be honest, that's not what it was meant to be. It's efficient, it's quiet, it's perfect for thing, the, the stuff that I'm working on, which is setting up a firewall. It's lightweight for something uh, uh, like a small server, if that's what you want to set it up for. And that's exactly what I need right now. I just need something that's small that allows me to be able to expand as I needed and set up something that's a default gateway uh, in my in my uh, lab environment right now. And and this is exactly what I need. So and it looks good. So it's a plus for me. So out of the box, it comes with Castle OS, which is based on Debian. It's a lightweight web-based operating system designed for self-hosting application and managing storage. Castle OS gives you like a simple dashboard where you can quickly install and manage apps like Nextcloud, Plex, or even Docker containers if you want to. It's built for home lab users and people who want to, who want something that's like a non-fussy, non, -fussy, non uh, 
that extra work set up uh, for self-hosting some things in the environment. Now for my case, like I said earlier, I'm going to be using this guy as a firewall, so I will not be sticking to Castle OS. I'll be replacing it with OpenSense, but if you're looking for an easy way to run home, like a home lab server, it's actually pretty good. I kind of played around with it a little bit. It looks good, it feels good. And if you're looking for something that can just get you up and running and you can start tinkering with a, a lot of some of those home lab things, it's perfect. I love it. It's well designed, it looks beautiful, and it's very simple and uh, it just works. So if you need something that's just a home lab, I definitely say go for it. And that is pretty much it for this video, guys. So this is one more addition to the lab. Like I said earlier, the whole idea here is to build things one step at a time, layering on new skills as we go along. In the next video, we're going to be installing OpenSense on this guy. Now, OpenSense is new to me, like I said uh, earlier in the video, but it's pretty exciting and I can't wait to really dive into it to get a better understanding of how it works. So I'm really excited about that. But as always, don't forget to stay geeking. I will see you guys on the next one. And, well, peace.